Hey, hey, hello, welcome. I am back. I have been gone, but now I am here and hopefully I will stay here. <laughs> I will do my best to stay <laughs> and not be sick and shit anymore, but I feel good now. Yes. <laughs> I thought I was going to have the time to send a quick little text, but I did not. So I will do that real quick and then reading will commence. I am highly excited. Uh, typing. There we go. Send. Take that away. Take this back. Like so. And then also. Do this. Boop. And then shoop. Boop. Everything should be good. Remember how to stream. <laughs> And here is a reading. Yay! It's been a while. Oh. But it's hard to forget what happened last time because last time when we came back to the real world, left the dream realm, Sunny had an amazing interview with Teddy, which was awesome. And I wanted more of it. <laughs> and this psychology test results but no maybe someday we'll get something like it <laughs> that would be amazing to read um he got a lot of things i feel like he got another shadow double shadow now two personalities uh, and then we also hello today yo Congratulations on being first. Yay! Oh, and I shouldn't leave the dog out. I have a dog there. Um, and the last thing he got was this snake tattoo, which is a shadow as well, I think, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, a soul serpent. Mm, which can... It's like a tattoo on him. But he can turn it into a, a weapon, I think. Like, he can turn it, like, into something, if I remember correctly. I am better now, thank you. I've been sick and shit. Um, which people should know if they have joined the Discord, which you should do. <laughs> Um, but yes, and now here we are. Sunny's now kind of like a uh, kind of big deal. Yes, you are a Discord. Very good, very good. Oh no, very not good. E, not by me, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> and now he he hasn't missed. Um, Nevis is still in the dream realm, for all we know. 
Uh, we haven't met Cassie or Kai, Effie, anyone yet. I think. Um, but now he said, the last thing he said was like, oh, it was time to do something that he had dreaded doing ever since returning to real world. And I'm like, oh, what can it be? I hope it's meeting someone like... I want to meet people. I want him to talk to people. <laughs> I was like, maybe it's Master Jet. Maybe. We will see. Or it's something completely different. Who knows? We will now find out. Let's go. Chapter 360. Broken. In a heavily guarded underground room, a young woman with silver hair was sleeping in a transparent machine that kept her body alive. Her face was pale and thin, painted by the ghostly glow of machine lights and deep, angular shadows. The room was peaceful and silent, the hum of machinery creating low background noise. From time to time, a piece of medical equipment produced a sound and grew quiet again. A blind girl with piercing blue eyes stood quietly near the sleeping pod, an empty expression written in the delicate lines of her beautiful face. If it wasn't for the fact that her hand rested on the hilt of, the, of an elegant rapier, a person would easily mistake her for one of the hollows that were cared for on another level of the hospital complex. The door of the room did not open, however. There was suddenly another presence inside. A young man with pale skin and dark, cruel eyes appeared out of the shadows and walked over to stand on the opposite side of the sleeping pod. His steps were soft and quiet. I guess the thing he dreaded was actually something bad. I thought it was going to be like, ha, ah, funny, he doesn't, don't want to meet her again. <laughs> She's annoying. But, no. Apparently he was watching Nevis. <sighs> oh well. <laughs> he lingered for a while, then looked down at the young woman sleeping beneath the glass lid of the mechanical coffin. For a second, his face became became contorted by a terrible grimace. Grief, anger, fear, and longing mixed in his eyes, then disappeared, hidden behind a mask of cold indifference. Sonny stared at Nephis for a long time, trying to get his emotions under control. He knew that seeing her like this, weak and helpless, would affect him. But he didn't know just how much it was going to hurt him. He also had not anticipated how dark the thoughts entering his mind would be. I can kill her right now. One strike of the moonlight shard and I'll be free again. But no, he couldn't. That's fucked up, Sonny. <laughs> I'm happy that he couldn't, but damn. Hmm. Since Nephis is his master. Ooh. Firstly, because there was no guarantee that Nephis would die if her body was destroyed. Just like there were hollows. People whose souls had been destroyed while leaving an empty body behind, they were lost. People whose bodies in the real world had died, leaving their souls wandering the dream realm. He suspected that this was the reason why the people who wanted Changing Star dead had sent Caster to kill her in the dream realm, instead of infil infiltrating the academy. And secondly, and maybe more importantly, he simply could not bring himself to harm Nephis. Not again, not anymore, and not... Not like this. Cassie, on the other hand. Ha! <laughs> oh, because Cassie knows his true name as well, I guess. Don't kill Cassie, <laughs> what the fuck? With a dark grimace, Sonny slowly moved his gaze to the blind girl. As if noticing it, she turned slightly and said, Hello, Sonny. He stared at her, his eyes burning with fury. What? You can see now? Ooh. Cassie lingered for a moment, then shook her head. But she's been able to tell if it's you before. No, but something like that. A wild grin appeared on his face. Congratulations. Really good for you. You won't be useless anymore, at least. Oh! Oh! He knew that his words were going to hurt her, and was glad to say them for that reason. What? No! Evil bitch. <laughs> the blind girl didn't react and just continued staring into the emptiness, her eyes cold and distant. But he wasn't fooled. 
He knew her well enough to recognize the ocean of pain hiding behind that coldness. Good. Suffer. You deserve this. No, you doesn't. She doesn't. <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, like, I can understand it, but still. Can, not Cassie. Sonny opened his mouth, wishing to accuse her, but then forced himself to stop. He had to keep himself under control. Swallowing his angry words, Sonny gritted his teeth and spat. How? How did you even know? Cassie he hesitated for a bit, then answered quietly. When you killed that spy from the castle, you said it out loud then. I saw it. In a vision. After that, the rest was not impossible to figure out. His eyes widened. Sunder remained silent for a long time, trying to deal with the shock that her words had caused him. <laughs> he got enslaved. That's... Yeah, but... <sighs> Still, like, that's not her... I mean, it is her fault, actually. But in a way, it isn't. <sighs> Beneficent nice. <laughs> no, she's not. Uh, but still. But still. Harper. When I killed Harper... The memory of that horrible day sent a shudder through his soul. He remembered it so vividly. The blood streaming down his hands as he held the pitiful young man down, murdering him, giving in to the agony of the flaw, and whispering in a hoarse, barely audible voice, Lost from light, I am lost. Lost from light. Standing in the underground room of the hospital complex, Sonny wanted to both laugh and cry. So, this is it. This was what did me in. One mistake. I only made one mistake, and it was all it took to undo me. It was almost as if Harper had managed to avenge himself from beyond the grave. Well, he had never gotten a grave, really. Sonny just dumped his body in the ruins for the nightmare creatures to feast on. Eee. Nephis would never have found out without her. Yes, but... <laughs> it's not her fault that he she found out and it's like to save Nephis from still <laughs> they're all bad then <laughs> a lot of good it did him in the end piercing the blind girl with a burning look he said through gritted teeth so that was why you were waiting for me back then when you gave me the eternal spring, you were... you were ready to say goodbye. You knew? Cassie slowly faced him, then said in a steady, even tone. Yes. I did. Sonny looked down, clenching his fists. You knew. If you knew. Then why didn't you try to change anything? Why, curse you? Cassie stared at him, her calm expression finally collapsing. Pain, sorrow, and anger contorted her face, and with a voice so hurt that it almost sounded as if she was bleeding, she answered, Didn't try? Of course I tried. I tried everything I could to make the future I saw change, but no matter how much I tried, it never did. It always remained the same. Even worse, my attempts only made it appear even more inevitable. Turning away, she gritted her teeth and remained silent for a while her hands trembling. I... I... I was the first one to understand what my vision of the Crimson Spire meant. Shadows devouring a dying angel. I understood it on that very day. Cassie closed her eyes for a moment, then spoke again, her voice quiet. Don't you remember? I even asked you to promise to always protect her. And what did you say? Sunny stared at her, remembering. Yes, at the very start, there had been a conversation like that. No. I said no. A fragile smile appeared on Cassie's face. Yes, you said no. And on that day, I knew that I had to make a choice. And I made it. I chose Neff. Ooh. Ooh. 
She shivered and hugged herself, as if dying of cold. I had to betray one of my best friends to save the other, and I did. I chose to sacrifice you to save Neff. Of course, I fooled myself for a while, telling myself that nothing bad would happen, that if I helped Neff, maybe both of you would survive. But deep down, I knew that it was just one of the possible outcomes. So what was the difference? I betrayed you, and you know what? A small, bitter laugh escaped from her lips. It was nothing. I betrayed my best friend and nothing still changed. I sacrificed you but couldn't save anyone. Despite it all, I couldn't, couldn't change fate. Sunny stared at her for a while, then snarled. That's it? That's your speech? That's what you have to say for yourself? What do you want me to do? Pity you? A furious gleam appeared in her, his eyes. After everything I have done for you, after I saved your life countless times, took care of you as if you were my sister, this is how you chose to repay me? By giving my biggest secret to Neff so that she could use it against me when the time came? Cassie remained silent, not saying anything. Do you even know what you've done? Do you even know what you've taken from me? She hesitated for a bit, then answered quietly. I didn't know why or how my vision would come true. I only knew that it would happen in the spire. So I gave your secret to Nephis, hoping that she would survive thanks to it. Sunny laughed, then grew quiet. An oppressive silence settled between them and remained unbroken for several minutes. After a while, he finally said, I can understand. Rationally, I do. You were forced to make a terrible decision, with both choices being a betrayal, and you chose to help Neff, who was with you first, who saved you when I would have just left you to die. Hello, Mojo, welcome. But then, a cold gleam appeared in his eyes. But that doesn't mean that I can forgive you. You go to hell, Cassie. Go to hell and die there, for all I care. I hope that I will never see you again. Ah! What? No! No way. Oh. He will come back. He will, he will come back. There's no way he won't. There's no way he won't. Oh. With that, Sonny turned around to leave, but then stopped. He couldn't help but be cruel to her one last time. Why? Why do you do this? <laughs> My heart. Oh, and that secret? It was the reason why she got stuck there all alone. So, in a sense, you have doomed both of your friends. Oh, no. <laughs> Cassie. <laughs> As he spoke those words, Cassie flinched. A satisfied, vindictive smile appeared on Sunny's face. But why did it hurt him so much to say those words? Yes, good! Bitch. So, congratulations. You made it back, Cassie. Go back home, spend time with your family. Didn't you tell me that your mother makes the best eggs? Eat your fill. Try to enjoy them, knowing what you did. I know what Cassie has done, but I still love her. <laughs> I care for her. She's a tiny baby. As the blind girl paled and turned away with a broken expression on her face, he smiled bitterly and dissolved into the shadows. Bonds of friendship were such a fragile thing. They were so hard to create, but so easy to break. All it took was a moment. She did her best, though. I think she did her best. She didn't know. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I want to protect Cassie. Yes, me too. Oh. 
Good chapter. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> Fuck, Sonny is an ass. He's amazing. Okay. <laughs> chapter 361. Making plans. Oh, that's right. Wait. Hold on for one second. Right? Agreed. At least Cassie got them out. It's like, what other bad things has she done? Okay, this was a kind of big thing, <laughs> but it's like... She's been good, and now she does one bad thing. <laughs> Hello, final smile! Welcome! Welcome! Welcome back! I doubt Nephis would leave him behind even without secret. Maybe she would knock him out and take him to the portal. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. But still. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. I will move on. Okay, I'm sorry. Chapter 361. Making plans. Sitting with his back against the door of his room, Sonny stared ahead, his heart, his heart empty. He had lived most of his life alone. One year ago, he had entered the dream realm alone, and now he was alone once again. But not having something was very different from losing it. Now that he knew how precious true friendship and affection were, Existing without them felt like torture. It felt like there was a bleeding wound on his soul, left there after he had so cruelly severed the tether connecting him to Cassie. Tether? Tether, right? <laughs> tether. One of the very few people he cared for in this world. See, he cares about her and still he said this. Yeah! Hurting her felt good and justified, but instead of relief, it only brought him more pain. See? Bad, Sunny. Nevertheless, he did not regret what he had done. Okay, fucking. <laughs> Sometimes one had to endure suffering. Sometimes pain was necessary. Now, Sunny was completely alone. So was Cassie. And somewhere in the dream realm, Nephis was alone, too. The three of them had done the impossible, but paid a heavy price for it. What a fiasco. Agreed. Who'd have thought that one day, he would not only escape the Forgotten Shore, but also become vastly more powerful than he had ever dreamed, only to sit on the floor in a dark room, feeling miserable. With a resentful grimace, Sonny shook his head inside. Enough of wallowing in self-pity. He had a lot of things to do. A lot of plans to make. The horrors of the Forgotten Shore were now behind him, but new threats already loomed in the distance. Ugh. Firstly, he was now at the mercy of another person. Despite the fact that his master was lost in another world with very low chances of ever making it back, Sonny felt that they were fated to meet again. He didn't know how to feel about that. Or rather, he both desperately longed for Nephis to return and wished that she was dead and wished that she died. His emotions for her were intense, overwhelming, and an absolute mess. <laughs> He loves her! <laughs> Despite all that, Sunny didn't think that she would die. Somehow, he was sure that Nephis would not perish in the dream realm and eventually make it back. Maybe in a few months. Maybe in a few years. But she would achieve the impossible once again and return to the real world. The question was, how? Would she travel to the human territory through the hollow, hollow mountains or head in another direction? They didn't know much about what surrounded the Forgotten Shore from the east, west, or north. He doubted that those places were better than the horrifying misty mountains, though. 
that doubt was based on one simple fact. There was no information about them, which meant that no human had ever returned from those regions of the dream realm to tell the tale. Although deadly, hollow mountains were at least known to mankind. Chances were, Changing Star would choose to try her luck there instead of venturing into the unknown. Nothing was more dangerous than that which she knew nothing about, after all. Unknown. Sunny frowned. That was another problem he had to face. Or rather, an opportunity he would potentially be able to exploit. Due to his fated attribute, Sunny had stumbled onto the legacy of a creature of a creature named Weaver and got a glimpse into the secrets of the gods. What he saw there left him both terrified and breathless. There was a boundless mystery hiding in the ruined land of dreams and nightmares, a tapestry that connected the dead gods, the unknown, the daemon, the demon, demons, but he called yeah, yeah, and the nightmare spell together. The former rulers of the dream realm were gone, but the spell remained, and humanity, including Sunny himself, had now become an unwilling part of that tapestry through it. Hello, James! Yes! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Sunny's most ardent desire was to control his own fate, and he couldn't achieve it without knowledge. Now that he knew what to look for, he had to deepen his understanding of the fate of the gods and the origins of the spell. Who knew? Maybe that was where the keys to his freedom were hidden. And then there were the sovereigns. His face grew dark. Honestly, why is everything so complicated? Why couldn't he just open a memory store, become wealthy and fat, and live peacefully ever after? <laughs> Can, is that a side story, please? Please? Like one, like fucking... Oh... Like the beach episode, but but this one actually is like a side story. That would be, I want I want this. Like when he's done, he will do like multiple endings. Like th this one, I want this one, please. <laughs> that was his plan all along. However. The recent revelations made Sunny doubt the, val the validity of such plans. Judging from what Caster had said, there were some figures hiding in the shadows, ruling over the human world. And not only were they there, but Sunny was also, apparently, unwillingly doing their bidding. He still remembered the warning Nevis had given him once. She told them that there were words that could get him killed simply if he learned of their existence. Well, now he knew a lot of those words. Sovereigns, domains, lineage memories. Was he going to pretend to know nothing and hope that those powerful beings would not turn their gaze to him one day? Or was he going to do something to prepare for the day they do? Did he even have a choice, knowing what he did, with his fate hopelessly entangled with that of Changing Star? who was embroiled in these clandestine, clandestine machinations just by virtue of her birth. So bothersome. What was he supposed to do? What was the plan of action? Sunny sighed. Well, it was simple, really. Learn as much as he can about the sovereigns, but in a way that would never lead back to him. Explore the path of the dream realm to gain insight into the demons, the gods, and the unknown. But first and foremost, grow stronger. Much, much stronger. When Nephis returned, he had to be ready for the worst. Sunny didn't really think that changing star he knew would abuse her power over him. In fact, he was almost sure that she wouldn't. Not only because of the bond between them, but also because in Nephis' warped mind, doing so would simply be beneath her. However, he wasn't going to let this sweet hope prevent him from creating contingen contingencies. If she ever decided to truly make him a slave, one of them was going to die. Standing up, Sunny walked over to the desk and wrote on a piece of synthetic paper. Zero out of two thousand. Then he summoned the runes, glancing at them, and added a second string of numbers. Two thousand seven hundred and forty-nine out of three thousand. 
However, the runes shimmered and changed before he was done writing. The number of soul essence grew bigger. Sunny stared at the runes for a few seconds, then corrected the number. Then he put the pen down and looked at the piece of paper in front of him. Zero out of two thousand. Two thousand seven hundred and seventy-three out of three thousand. All right. So this was it. This was the plan. From now on, this was his life's goal. Ooh. So let's... <laughs> What is this? Yes, I agree. Cassie, third main character. The others are supporting. But Kai and Effie are big, <laughs> are up there. <laughs> but yeah, I don't really know how to categorize main characters and side characters and whatever the fuck. To me, like. Sunny always my main characters. It's like Cassie and Neff. Below that, Neff is a bit higher than Cassie, but they're still kind of the same. Then Kai and Effie. And then the others who have a name. <laughs> His life goal has become the grind. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live for the grind. Oh. Both types. Anyway, chapter 362. Breakfast invitation. Ooh. Spicy. <laughs> the sake of my grind scent. The grind mindset. Oh my god. Oh. <sighs> Oh no, not eepy. Did you not eat good? Or is it early, early, or late, late? The initial series of tests. The interview with the government specialists. The somber conversation with Cassie. And the hours Sunny had spent pondering about his past, present, and future took up almost an entire day. A new dawn was already bathing the world in soft sunlight which Sonny knew because one of the walls in his underground room was made into a false window, with a vista of one of the parks in the academy being projected onto it from a remote camera. He was experiencing mild mental fatigue, fatigue, but was not sleepy at all, at least not yet. Truly, the physique of an awakened, which was much more resilient than that of a mundane human. There were still a few things he had to do. In all the turmoil of the past 24 hours, he had not gotten a chance to take a proper look at his memories. For example, Sunny was about to summon the runes when, suddenly, there was a knock on his door. He flinched. What? Who could it be? For a moment, a mental picture of Effie and Kai appeared in his mind, but then he dismissed it. The two of them must have been as busy as their awakening as he was. Much more, most likely, considering that they probably had friends and families to deal with too, on top of everything else. With them being in different facilities, coming to the academy just to pay him a visit was not a likely scenario. Nope. If I could have a zero power, it would be shadow clones like Naruto to both sleep and be awake. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Mantic! We are so back! And Mr. Ike44. YouTube live stream. Whoop whoop! <laughs> Welcome! I don't feel like I've seen you before. Welcome! Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. See you a little bit extra this time. Congratulations. <laughs> Certainly not that soon. Oh, more drinkies. <sighs> Hiding one of the shadows on his body to appear like a normal person. So <laughs> Sonny, that's not gonna help. Like that that's not enough to make you look like a norm like appear like a normal person. To have one shadow? Like what do you mean? <laughs> that's not enough. I'm sorry. Ugh. 
Sunny walked to the door and opened it. Standing there was a striking, confident woman in her late twenties. <laughs> Is it my sujet? <laughs> Immediately, it seemed as though the temperature inside of the room dropped by a couple of degrees. Yes, it it has to be. She had short, raven yeah it is black hair and icy blue eyes. Her flawless skin was smooth, supple and as white as snow. The woman was dressed in a dark blue uniform with silver epaulets and black leather boots. The jacket of the uniform was casually unbuttoned, revealing a tank top that was currently drawn taut against her full <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> the first the first woman we ever saw in the <laughs> Crap. What are you staring at? Awakened some less. Sunny looked up with wide eyes. Master Jet, I was just um uh, appreciating your fashion sense. Why does he say this? I mean he has to He can't lie, but my god. Indeed, it was Soul Reaper Yet, the ascendant who worked for the government and had welcomed him back to the real world after the first nightmare. Sunny had sometimes thought about this beautiful woman during his journey into the dream realm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> woman located. <laughs> Not only because the three pieces of advice Master Jet had given him ended up saving his life on multiple occasions, but also because she was from the outskirts, just like him. And the third... <laughs> Hi, JP! Welcome! Hey, hey! Happy to see you. Knowing that someone as unfortunate as that had managed to not only survive, but even thrive in the ruthless reality of the nightmare spell had given fuel to his determination, as well as providing vital perspective. But what was she doing at his door? Sunny studied, studied Master Jet, suddenly full of doubt. She looked exactly as she had a year ago. It's just a year. The only difference being that her uniform had more wrinkles, and there were now dark circles under her eyes. As he watched, she grinned. My fashion sense? Why, thank you. If you want, I can introduce you to my tailors. You will have to sign a few thick contracts to receive a comfy suit such as this, though. Sunny forced out a smile. Ah, I see. Those tailors are slightly out of my price range, I'm afraid. But thanks for the offer. After a short pause, he cautiously asked, Um, Master Jet? It is very nice to see you again, but to what do I owe the pleasure? I am sure that you are too busy to visit other... Ah! I am sure that you are too busy to visit every random returnee. Returnee? <laughs> she looked at him for a couple of seconds, then suddenly yawned and shook her head to chase away sleepiness. Fuck, I read the word. <sighs> <laughs> Correct. But since there's some procedures you still have to go through and we already know each other, I thought that I'd do the honors. How kind. With that, she looked around the deserted corridor of the hospital complex with a dubious expression, lingered for a couple of seconds, and then asked, Wanna eat? <gasps> Ooh, so the, oh, the breakfast is spicy after all. Ooh, <laughs> I was right. I was right. Sick again? Asshole. Stop it. Fix it. Some time later, the two of them were walking through the ground level of the academy hospital. Sunny had thought that Master Jet would take him to the cafeteria there, but instead she headed toward the exit. Uh, where are we going? I thought that cafeteria was this way. She looked at him with confusion, then grimaced slightly. Hospital food? No thanks. Let me take you to the instructor's lounge. That's where they keep the really good stuff. Um. <laughs> we can't do it <laughs> Sunny coughed. Uh, but, Master Jet, you're not an instructor? She smiled and pointed to the three-star insignia on her left sleeve. Technically, I'm not. But the Academy is a government facility, so I outrank most of the people here. What are they going to do? Ooh. <laughs> he blinked a couple of times, then shrugged. Indeed, what are they going to do? Tell a master to get out? 
who would be that suicidal? As they exited the hospital complex and walked across the academy grounds, Sunny couldn't help but throw furtive glances at the confident young woman. Not because he was mesmerized by her, but because seeing her again was a strange experience. Back when they first met, he was just fresh from the first nightmare, barely accustomed to his new status as a sleeper. Being in the presence of a master was like standing in front of a legend. He remembered vividly how much fear and awe this beautiful stranger inspired in him. How acutely he felt the measure of ease with which she would be able to kill him, if she wished. All it would take was a flick of her finger. Now, slightly more than a year later, so much had changed. He was still pretty sure that he had no chance of taking her in a fight, a fair one at least. But the reverent fear was gone, replaced by simple respect. Sonny knew that he had it in himself, uh, to if not win, then at least survive a confrontation with someone like Jet. Okay. <laughs> in a sense, he was now half a legend himself. As he thought about how different things had become, the two of them approached a small, picturesque building near the center of the academy. Without slowing down, Master Jet walked past a few people that were staring at her with a strange mix of regard and disdain, and entered the instructor's lodge. Oh, right. I remember Teacher Julius mentioning that she was a terrible reputation. She has a terrible reputation. To be exact, he described her as a murderous savage, barbarian, having a problematic personality, and psychopathic killer. Uh... <laughs> Sounds like you! <laughs> no wonder people were giving them weird looks throughout the whole walk. For some reason, Sunny suddenly felt annoyed. Maybe because Jet was someone he knew, or maybe because she used to be an outskirt rat just like him. But he found himself feeling protective. Stay away, bastards. See if we give a damn. Oh, it's, it's us now. Ha! Thank you for the sub, James! Thank you! I appreciate it! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. At least the raccoonling knows. Twitch is more behind. Thank you! Master Jet clearly didn't, so why would he? Sunny looked at the next person to give her a dirty glance coldly, activating the murder math to its fullest potential. Immediately, the onlooker paled slightly and turned away. Sunny smiled. That's right, look away. Now, the most important part. Let's see what the instructors eat. <laughs> People! <laughs> It's AJ, by the way, and it's seeming like we are finally awake. <laughs> that silver bell moment before they leave is one of my favorites. Yes! <laughs> we are finally awake. Sorry, AJ. I will try and do my best to remember. <laughs> Oh, that. This is an interesting title. <laughs> Chapter 363 Citizen Sunny. At first glance, the interior of the instructor's lounge. Is it lounge or lodge, bitch? I swear to God, they said lodge. There it says lodge. I feel like it said lounge before. But now it's a lounge, and now it's a lounge. I don't fucking know. <laughs> now it's an interior's lounge. Lounge seemed simple and cozy. This is like a lounge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it got boop. Most of the furniture was made out of wood. Oh, maybe it is a lodge. <laughs> Creating a warm and welcoming atmosphere. Bright sunlight streamed through the tall windows, which were open slightly to let in the chilly winter air. However, his eyes widened slightly when Sunny realized that all the wood around him was natural, not synthetic. Huh? 
Extravagant. Wasteful. Noticing his expression, Master Jet smiled slightly. Let me guess, you have never seen that much real wood in one place? Sunny hesitated, then gave her a nod. Only in the dream realm. Damn, they don't have trees! <laughs> the young woman grinned, moved a share bag with her foot, and sat down at one of the tables. Where do you think all this came from? He looked around, seeing the instructor's lounge of the academy from a completely new perspective, then silently sat down, lost for words. Master Jet summoned the menu, made a selection, then leaned back and tiredly rubbed her face. Believe it or not, the chair you're sitting on is made out of dead titan. Of a dead titan. Okay. Cool. <gasps> Sunny stared at her, shocked. Suddenly, he had a strong impulse to jump out of the chair. What? She chuckled and gestured around. All of this, actually. Back when Bastion was first established, it was surrounded by a vast and very hungry forest. The whole thing was one giant nightmare creature. Clan Valor spent decades at war with it, losing many knights. In the end, the forest was destroyed, leaving behind a lot of high-quality lumber. And here we are. Sunny scratched the back of his head, then cautiously knocked on the wooden table. The thing seemed dead, but he decided to remain alert, just in case. <laughs> it had once been a part of a titan, after all. Soon, their food arrived. Sunny half expected for it to be delivered by an actual Echo, but luckily, it was brought by a mundane automated server. Taking his plates off the mo motorized tray, Sunny stared at the feast in front of him with wild eyes. There were fried potatoes, baked beans, <coughs> juicy roasted meat, <coughs> a salad made out of real vegetables, a bowl of fragrant soup, <coughs> several pieces of oven bread, mm, butter, jam, and even chocolate pudding for dessert. I'll take the bread, please. <laughs> it was the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. It was also his first time seeing some of these things in real life. Suddenly, the position of a research assistant once promised to him by teacher Julius did not seem so unattractive. <laughs> they hate on such cuisine. How dare you call it cuisine? It's disgusting. <laughs> I would never survive. Unholy night, welcome. It's a post -apocalypse apocalyptic world. So, yeah, wood is a rare commodity. I guess. But still, wood. As a Swedish person, I was like, what? You bitches have no wood? <laughs> That's insane. It's impossible. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> I am very picky. <laughs> yes. I feel like uh, during my years now of streaming, so, like, I mentioned so many times that, like, me and food doesn't really go <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> I will eat sand. Yes. <laughs> Roasted sand, please. Uh, yes, unattractive. Uh, please excuse me. Master Jet waved at him and concentrated on her own food. Not wasting any time on manners, Sunny assaulted his breakfast with the same level of ferocity as when battling nightmare creatures. Some time later, with his bully on the verge to bursting open, he pushed away empty plates and leaned back with a satisfied smile at his face. Ah, this is life. Master Jet glanced at him with a dry smile. What did I tell you? This is where they hide the good stuff. Sunny looked at the empty plates with regret and sighed. Yeah, although after a year of eating almost nothing except for monster meat, I would have been satisfied even by synth paste. Her smile dimmed at the mention of the most common food in the outskirts. As two glasses of beautiful dark tea steamed in front of them, Master Jet sighed, then took out something from the inner pocket of her uniform. It was a small metal box with a sensor on its lid. Placing the box on the table, she looked at Sunny and asked, you must be wondering why I visited you, right? Bitch, he asked. <laughs> yes. 
Sunny tilted his head slightly, stared at the metal box for a few seconds, and then answered in a cautious tone. And also apocalyptic world. Most of his life, Sunny E just synth paste with less than delightful taste. What the fuck is synth paste even? Hey, hey! Like, what the fuck is that? I've never heard that. I've never read that shit. Oh! <laughs> ha! <sighs> synth paste is a proprietary food product of synth foods. It is widely distributed through... No, what the fuck is this shit? No, <laughs> no, I don't want to be in here. Let me go. What is this? It's from the novel, keep reading. No! <laughs> I want to know! While higher nutrients grow with plant taste, proteins and other vitamins in one package. Yeah, it, it's shit. <laughs> I just say that it's shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm at gunpoint. It will be answered. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, no specific. Okay. I didn't find shit anyway. I got to some weird ass fucking. Ah, uh, it's whatever. <sighs> right. I, I slurped. Yes. To be honest, I am very curious. She nodded, then smiled reassuringly. Don't be nervous. It's just a formality, and a very beneficial one at that. Put your finger on the sensor. <laughs> <laughs> He hesitated, then did as she had told. The sensor buzzed for a half for half a minute, and then a small green light ignited on the metal box. With a quiet click, it unlocked. Master Jet opened the box and took out several objects. <laughs> this only unlocks if you're an asshole. <laughs> a slick communicator made out of a flexible glass, a memory ship with the government seal etched on its surface, and a small iron badge with two stars engraved into it. Okay. Pushing them towards Sunny, she lingered for a moment and then said in a light tone, Congratulations, Awakened Sunless. You are now officially a citizen of the seventh rank, no less. Oh, so we. Oh, okay. Her words struck Sunny like a hammer. Silent, he stared at the three objects in front of him, his face not betraying even a hint of emotion. A citizen? I wonder what the seventh rank, like. Ranking citizenship is also interesting. Back in the outskirts, people lived and died dreaming of becoming one of the true citizens. That simple word hid so much meaning. Access to proper food, human rights, and better life. To all the things that none of them really had. To having a future. Very few of these people had ever gotten the chance to hear the word citizen in connection to their name. Being poor and lowly only led to becoming destitute and falling to the bottom. It rarely led to rising higher, let alone soaring to the peak. And here he was, not only becoming a citizen, but even jumping over all the steps and arriving at the very pinnacle of the social hierarchy in one go. Not just a citizen, and not even one of high rank, but of the highest. Okay, seven is the highest. <laughs> okay, answers that. Seventh rank. There's literally nothing higher. Finally, his expression changed, becoming grim. Looking up at Master Jet, he asked in a somber tone, I get it that I would be made a citizen after awakening, but seventh rank? Isn't that a little too much? Master Jet laughed. Sunless, you don't really know what you did, do you? Sunny looked at her without humor, then said, 
I am pretty sure that I do, but please enlighten me. She shook her head and sighed. Listen, of all the sleepers that had returned from the dream realm in the last few years, there are only five whose files were marked as SS, and you are one of them. Shadow slave! <laughs> Slave Sunny. <laughs> Super sick. <laughs> yep, shit for poor and desperate from outskirts. Yep. But Sunny would eat even something worse. Okay, no, don't tell me shit like that. Another number seven. Seven classes and seven ranks of ascended. And even in usual world seven ranks of citizenship yep how are you reading by the way like what side are you using web novel web novel i bought it and now i'm reading it in a browser <laughs> Ugh. Okay, so there SS <clears throat> Super Sunny <laughs> Hiccup Interesting. Okay. Chapter three hundred and sixty four SS class awakened sunless. What what about Kai, Effie, and Cassie then? But then because they had the interviews for, for a reason, right? And then everyone would probably be like, oh but I mean like they did shit as well, obviously. But I don't know if they did as much. <laughs> yes, but different. It depends on what they count as like wow. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully she will tell us. I want to know exactly, please. Ah. Sunny stared at Master Jet, a strange expression frozen in his face. After a while, he asked, That's great, but what the hell does SS mean? <laughs> Most of your questions will be answered, but not now. <laughs> yes, don't answer any of my questions. I'm just asking them so to show my, like, my thought process and all this to give some nice commentary <laughs> i guess and because it's hard to stop myself from speaking but i don't want answers write them down no shut up <laughs> never she smiled and sipped her tea looking at him across the table placing the cup back down she then shook her head slightly and said the government, and the powerful legacy clans, of course, keeps track of every awakening in the world. That shouldn't be a surprise for you, right? Sunny slowly nodded. Yeah, that makes sense. Master Jet shifted slightly, then continued. Firstly, because every awakened technically has a duty to respond when a gate opens near their location. That's what the special communicator is for. In exchange for all the privileges we receive, we have to protect this world from the nightmare creatures. A dark grimace appeared in his face. Of course, realistically, no one can force you to actually fulfill that duty, or at least no one is going to. Many awaken turn around and run as soon as they receive a gate crisis alert. Okay, <laughs> bitches. Sunny grimaced. On one hand, he understood such a reaction perfectly. Why would they want to risk their lives for, a random, for random strangers? Not every awakened was good in a fight, too. Not everyone was like the artisans of the Dark City, who had gone into battle side by side with those dreamers who possessed combat as aspects. But on the other hand, the idea of running away while monsters were devouring mundane humans and wreaking havoc in the real world simply rubbed him the wrong way. Oh really? It does now? Hmm, interesting. It seemed as though Sunny had somehow developed a bit of pride in the past year. Hmm character development. 
He didn't want to run from the nightmare creatures and capi capitulate, capitulate to the spell. He might have even been affected with having morals. <gasps> oh my god, morals? <gasps> Crazy. Better squish this lunacy fast. Oblivious to his thoughts, Master Jet continued. Secondly, newly awakened are monitored because everyone wants to recruit the best of them. Talents need to be nurtured, and for that, they need to be recognized first. So the most promising awakened receive a mark on their file. Usually it's S-A, or simply S. Do you know what that means? That they're good. <laughs> Sunny shook his head. She grinned. S-A means strategic asset. Oh, it's actually, okay. Hmm. There's not a lot of awakened who are considered to be important enough to be assigned that designation. Having one means that you are viewed as a person who can potentially be important to the very survival of humanity, or at least make an impact on the global scale. Simply put, it's either someone whose aspect can be extremely useful to society, or someone who has a high chance of becoming a master, maybe even a saint. Master Jet looked and took another sip of tea, then gestured lazily at herself. So it was S.A. is like master or saint. So what the fuck is S.S., bitch? Like, or S even. Master Jet, like me, not to brag, but people with S designation are few and, f are few and far between. That's why we usually receive a lot of attention and support from either the government or the legacy faction we decided to align with. But here comes the best part. Oh, she's not gonna even fucking... She grinned. Currently, everyone is running around and foaming at their mouths because of you guys. All hundred of those who returned from the Forgotten Shore were marked as strategic assets. That is... That is an unprecedented event in human history. A sudden appearance of a hundred powerful awakened is not that important in the grand scheme of things. But if those awakened all have a have a very high chance of becoming masters, maybe even saint. That would be enough to completely shatter the current status quo. Sunny stared at her, thinking. Up until now, everything that he heard was in accordance with how he had imagined things to be. But... I get it. However, what's that about me being marked as SS? What does SS stand for? Master Jet nodded. I was about to explain. About those marked as strategic assets, there are those marked as special strategic assets. SSA, or SS for short. Wow, thanks. <laughs> so short. <laughs> Freaking. This designation is even rarer. Actually, very few people had ever gotten it. What it means is that you are considered to have a very high chance of becoming a saint. You know how rare transcendent are, right? So, of course, Everyone now wants to be your friend, including the government, hence the seventh rank citizen status. She looked at him with an apologetic smile and added, Granted, out of the five people with SS designation, you are the least outstanding. No offense. <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> Thanks. Sunny glanced at her and smiled slightly. None taken. Who are the other four? Master Jet shrugged. Three of them were the only ones who received true names from the spell after leaving the Forgotten Shore. Awakened Athena, Awakened Kai, and Awakened Cassia. The fourth one is Awakening Song Seishan, who is, well, from one of the great clans. To be honest, your own achievements, achievements, while still incredible, pale in comparison to theirs. But someone had noted that you went from being the second to last in the Academy rating to leading a, nah to leading a hundred sleepers to the gateway during the last leg of the journey. You are seen as someone with great growth potential, in short. He nodded, somewhat satisfied by that answer. It's not as bad as I thought. Perfect, then. He wanted to be, like, good, but not the best, so... Mm. Hello, Dick Zorn, welcome back! Yes, don't explain things to me. <laughs> Thank you, Dixhorn. <laughs> Actually, it was perfect. It was exactly the result, result he had hoped for. 
to be considered one of the best, but also the worst of the best. He needed status to receive all the best opportunities in this world. He needed to have value. Looking at the beautiful ascended in front of him, Sunny took a sip of the tea, then smiled brightly. So, uh, that really sounds great. A great honor and so on. But what I really want to know is what exactly can I get thanks to being the fifth most incredible person of an entire generation? Master Jet laughed and glanced at him with approval. Good, straight to the point. Well, that depends. What is it that you want the most? <laughs> I want to sell my memories and I want to be fat and rich. <laughs> Sonny didn't hesitate before answering, his tone steady and firm. To be free. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the smile disappeared from her face. Looking down at her tea, Master Jet lingered for a while and then said wistfully, then you're out of luck. I'm sorry, but freedom is just a myth, Selness. No one is free in this world. Mundane humans have to toil and struggle to remain alive, even if they are fortunate enough to reach the height of success and acquire great wealth. Their lives still belong to the awakened who protect them from their night from the nightmare creatures. But the awakened, we are not free too. Our lives belong to the spell. Kill the spell. She paused then added with slight sadness. If we want to survive its trials, we need to tether ourselves to others, be it powerful clans or the government, or even just the members of our cohort. We have to depend on our allies and companions, and they in turn have to depend on us. All of us are chained to one another, Selness, and that is the only way we can survive. So, think again about what you want. Think carefully. Sonny stared at her for a long time, his eyes full of a dark, deep, heavy emotion. After a while, he sighed slowly, then said, If that is the case, then I want to be strong. Ooh. <laughs> wow! <laughs> strong, Sonny. Okay then, well... What's going to be your response to that? Okay. <laughs> Sunny starts lifting weights. Right. Get on the grind, Sunny. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Chapter 365. Young Prospect. Master Jet looked at him for a while, then smiled. Perfect. That is a good goal to have especially for people like us. She took a sip of tea, then closed her eyes for a few moments. All right, there are many ways to become strong, some more straightforward than others. Ideally, you would want a powerful organization backing you up, but that is not the only way. In fact, such a partnership is a double-edged sword, sword. You gain a lot, but also have to give a lot in return. I'll provide you with the basic information, and you can decide for yourself. Sunny straightened a little and listened to her attentively. Master Jet thought for a few seconds and then said, In this next few days, you will have to decide what Citadel to go to. That is not the same as joining a faction, but closely tied to it. Usually, young Awakened have to compete for the right to join a desirable faction and therefore be taken to the Citadel it operates from. Your case is different, though. Everyone wants you. And I mean everyone. So you can pick any of the human citadels in the Dream Realm to call home. She paused, yawned, and then continued. I can't read, like, uh, the word yawn. Or think about yawning without doing it. Ah, it's so annoying. As you should already know, there are three great human citadels in the Dream Realm, as well as many smaller ones. The primary citadels belong to the great clans, while the smaller ones can be either ruled by a lesser clan or remain independent. Regardless, all of them are situated around the three main human enclaves and tied to them in one form or another. No matter where you go, you'll be in the sphere of influence of one of the great clans. It's just that you can be either in its center, close to the center, or in the periphery. Sunny scratched his head. What about the government? Doesn't the government control many citadels? Master Jet shook her head. Out there in the dream realm, the government has less influence than the great clans. It does, however, maintain a presence in all the important citadels, which allows us to play a unique role. 
In the dream realm, we serve as a connective tissue between the three factions, I guess. That flexibility has its own benefits, if you ask me. Boop. She knocked lightly on the table and said, In any case, even if you decide to refuse the obvious choice of settling in one of the great citadels, you'll have to select one of the three territories. They are not connected, as some people think. In fact, there are deadly and extremely hazardous regions separating each of the human dominions, dominions from each other. So that is going to be your first decision. This is which territory to choose. That made sense. If Sunny chose to go to Bastion, for example, he would have the opportunity to build a relationship with the great clan Valor, which ruled it, or any of the lesser clans in its sphere of influence. He would lose the opportunity to be recruited into the great clan Song, though, or any other clan that existed in a separate human territory, and so on. Master Jet finished her tea and looked at the empty cup with a solemn expression. Oh, yeah. This is where I was supposed to give you the recruitment speech and try to convince you to join the government forces. But I'm not going to. You are smart enough to figure out the pros and cons of that path by yourself. All I will say is that you will never be truly accepted as an equal by the members of the legacy clans. SS designation or not. Maybe they won't say it to your face, but you'll always be treated as someone... A tiny bit lesser, at best. Sunny's expression darkened. Caster's face suddenly appeared in his mind, eyes full of disdain. What had the proud scion called him? A mongrel? Well, that mongrel got to your throat. Who's laughing now? <laughs> Is he gonna say that? To the... You know what? <laughs> I killed the <him>. like. <laughs> Master Jet had a similar kind of expression on her face. Had she experienced her own share of hardship because of her lowly background? Most likely. As Sunny was pondering what Master Jet's path to become an ascended must have looked like, she sighed, then smiled with irony. Not that entering a legacy clan is a bad deal. Actually, it's a dream come true for many, most even. With your renown, Sunless, any clan would be happy to give you pat patronage. Some might even adopt you. Hell, with your looks, even marriage is not out of the question. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, calm down. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Jet? Please. <laughs> I can't, like, you can't just say this to me. <laughs> I will panic. Mm hmm, okay. As Sunny choked in his tea and did an actual spit take, Master Jet laughed. <laughs> marriage? What marriage? She shook her head. How do you think legacy clans recruit talents? There are patronage contracts, adoptions, and matrimony. The latter being the preferred method when it comes to true gems. Anything to enhance the bloodline, you know? Like the breeding. <laughs> wow. As Sunny stared at her with wide eyes, Master Jet chuckled and continued. In any case, these are your options. You can go with the government, one of the three great clans, or a lesser clan. Each will provide you with plenty of incent incentives to join them instead of others. The most wealthy factions will even shower you with soul shards. You and I both know how important those are. Few people can refuse such an offer. <laughs> he can she sighed wistfully, lingered for a bit, and then added, Well, I get no, because it's still money. Not he can't consume them, but I, I completely forgot, like he can buy shit with them as well, so it's money. So I take it back. Of course, you can also remain independent. In that case, you won't have any special support outside the usual benefits of being a highly regarded awakened, be it in the form of training, resources, or access. But you also won't be tied down by any obligations free to travel around the dream realm as you wish, making a living by hunting nightmare creatures or providing useful services to your citadel of choice. There are plenty of independent awakened out there, although few who are truly successful. It's a tough way to live. Why do I feel like he's gonna go with that one? <laughs> Legacy egg baskets. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Sunny rubbed his face. Feeling slightly overwhelmed by the 
cornucopia of choices in front of him. He had no need for soul shards, but being showered in them still seemed like a great experience. <laughs> Master Jet grinned. So, what do you think? He hesitated for a while and said, I don't know. That's a lot to take in. I'll have to think about many things before making a decision. She nodded, as though that was an expected answer. Well, yeah. Good. Nothing good can come from rushing such a matter. With that, Master Jet took a small, secure plastic container out of her pocket and pushed it to Sunny. He took it and raised an eyebrow. What's that? She shrugged. A pack of military-grade stimulants to keep you awake for a while. Don't use more than one patch at a time. Wait, why am I explaining this to you? You're from the outskirts, so your knowledge of stimulant use must be extensive. In any case, with that, you'll be able to stay lucid for about a week. Contact me when you're ready to make a decision, and I'll arrange the rest. Oh, also feel free to call me if you have any questions. Scratch that. Not any questions, just important ones. <laughs> She stood up, stretched a little, okay, and gave him a little smile. Oh, don't tempt us, please. <laughs> well, it's been nice seeing you awake and sunless. You did well, staying alive out there. Warms my heart to know that another one of us did. I'll be off then. Time waits for no one, and all that. She turned around to walk away, but Sunny stopped her. Uh, Master <laughs> I have an important question. <laughs> uh, Master Jet? She glanced at him in confusion. Yeah? <laughs> Sunny hesitated for a bit, then raised his newly issued expensive slick communicator. I, uh, I don't have your contact. Oh my god! <laughs> Master Jet stared at him for a while, then grinned. <laughs> Want to get my number, huh? <laughs> Feeling his ears turning slightly red, Sonny coughed, but then took hold of himself and said with an easy smile, Yes, how else am I going to call you when I've made a decision? The beautiful woman shook her head and took his communicator and entered her contact information into it. Success! Returning the communicator to Sonny, she looked at him and said, Can't wait to hear from you, awake and sunless. See you later then. <laughs> with that, Master Jet walked away, leaving Sunny alone at the table. Looking around, he sat in silence for a while. Finally, he said quietly, Success! <laughs> Eat that, Caster! <laughs> I wonder, can I get another of everything I ate? I ate? That would be great. Okay, or food, fuck you. <laughs> a new basket reveals itself <laughs> oh. mm. very good very good I miss Jet fuck <laughs> now we have a number chapter 366 lessons of history oh <gasps> Julius, please. Oh, nice, JP. Nice, nice. <laughs> good one, good one. Sometime later, Sunny exited the instructor's lounge. The clear winter day welcomed him with chilly wind and tiny snowflakes dancing in the sunlight. Despite being dressed very lightly, his skin was covered only by the soft fabric of the simple training suit provided to him by the staff of the Academy Hospital Complex. Sunny did not feel too cold. That's being an awakening for you, I guess. If it had been a year and a few months ago, he would have been desperately searching for shelter, hoping that he would not freeze to death overnight or, even worse, get sick. But now Sunny felt great. He wasn't even uncomfortable. Pulling down his sleeves to hide the serpent tattoo, he inhaled the cool, perfectly filtered air, smiled, and started walking. Decisions, decisions. The conversation with Master Jet had been useful, but left him with more questions than answers. Each of the choices presented to him had alluring benefits, but also very serious drawbacks. 
great clans, lesser clans, government, or independent. Sonny tried to imagine himself as a legacy and silently shook his head. <laughs> all that prestige, all that wealth, the admiration of the masses, being a legacy meant being a part of the nobility, the elites above all elites. It was the exact opposite of what Sonny had been all his life. But who said that he had to remain the same in the future? From a pauper to a prince, that would be a nice transformation. Lord Sunless. That had a nice ring to it, didn't it? Lord Slave Sunless. <laughs> there were serious disadvantages to making such a choice, of course. Working for the government offered its, offered its own advantages, but at the cost of not receiving as much funds and resources, while being tied down by too many obligations. Both times Sunny had met Master Jet, she seemed busy and overworked. He couldn't imagine pursuing his goals with such a schedule. One of the functions of the awakened forces in service to the government was hunting down rogue members of their own kind. Awakened were people, after all, and there were criminals among them too. Especially because many were traumatized and driven to the edge of madness by their experiences in the nightmares and the dream realm. Ooh. If Sunny could absorb the essence of those humans he killed like all the other awakened, that path could have offered him a faster track to saturating his course. But as it was, he didn't see himself putting on the uniform, unless there were new gates opening every day, thus providing him with endless supply of nightmare creatures to hunt. By the way, how many gates were opening in a given year on average? Suddenly, Sunny realized that he had no idea. The propaganda never mentioned concrete numbers. Only the fact that Valiant Awakened had the situation under control. Did they? Really? The last option was to remain independent. That choice was seemingly in contradiction to his desire to acquire status and as many benefits as possible, but only on the surface. In fact, Sunny had already received most of what he wanted by becoming a high-ranking citizen and getting a free pick of any citadel. Of course, not having the vast resources of a legacy clan or the government would be a huge loss but it would also provide the best chance he had to keep all his secrets to himself. All three options were worthy of being considered. In the end, it all came to the fact that he simply didn't have enough information to make a decision. So, getting information was his first priority. But how? What was it called? A library? The academy has to have one of those, right? Sunny, of course, had never been to a library except for the ancient ruin in the Dark City, but he was familiar with the concept. There were similar types of public terminals in the outskirts too, although using them cost credits. He had never had any to spare, so his visits were few and far between, and he went there for entertainment, not to study. Ooh. <laughs> now that Sunny had himself a state-of-the-art communicator, <laughs> he would access a lot of information from the network, but doing so would doubtlessly leaving a digital trail behind. Considering that some of the topics he wanted to research were rather dangerous, he wanted to remain as anonymous as possible. A library it is. Pick up on that. Boop. Ten minutes later, he approached a square white building. Like most of the academy, its walls were made out of smooth, pristine alloy with wide windows that could be covered at any moment with reinforced shutters. There weren't many people in sight, so Sunny assumed that the library was not a popular des destination among the awakened. Why would it be? If most of the information stored there could be accessed remotely, a fucking bitch has fly. Hey. He was the weirdo for coming here in person. Entering through an automatic door, Sunny looked around and blinked a couple of times. Everywhere he looked, tall shelves full of paper books stretched into the distance. I was thinking about that one. I was like, are the books going to be out of paper then? I mean, all the books then when they had the trees. But it's like, if trees are that, like, ooh, you know. It's like, a library is full of trees. <laughs> but okay, it was made of paper. <laughs> Uh, then again, uh, uh, well, mm. Between them stood tables, meant for study, with several young men and women reading behind them silently. Most of them were using terminals to take notes, 
but some were actually writing by hand. Ooh, what the hell is that? All those books, of course, were printed on synthetic paper. Me. <laughs> okay, but why have them printed at all? Wouldn't it be way more convenient to read them read from a terminal like all normal people did? Bitch, you don't understand the greatness of physical books, <laughs> of paper, turning papers. Like, it's a whole different thing. It's a different experience. It's better. <laughs> Imagine having Shadow Slave in a book like, oh, yes. When? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yes, I want it. <laughs> Hardback, please. He had never seen a physical book in his life. The very idea of using one was mind-boggling. I can understand, but still, it's a, it's a feeling. But then, it made sense. Digital data storage technology was highly advanced, but susceptible to various types of damage. During the dark times, which came before the even darker times of the Nightmare Spell, back when humanity had been consumed by an endless series of devastating wars and cataclysmic natural disasters, a lot of knowledge had been lost due to over-reliances on digital mediums. Whole layers of culture were irrevocably gone as a result. I'm all about this. <laughs> like, I will have, like, notes and shit. <laughs> like, in my phone, and I will take it to the computer or some shit, but I'm like, what if, what if it just disappears? <laughs> and I was like, I need this. So I was like, I want to write all this down on paper. <laughs> But then it's like, paper is very fragile, like fucking, if it just gets soaked, it sh shit's over. But it's the same with the computer. It's just like, I want to have it... Beep. <laughs> Important shit that I write down, I want to ha also have it in a notebook or some shit. But it's... Uh... So is your phone. Yes, but still... It just feels better than have it written down. <laughs> it feels safer, like it's gonna last longer. I know! <laughs> it goes bloop. <laughs> but it's still... Yeah. Mm. Got us the result. Paper was still the safest way to preserve knowledge. See? <laughs> it's just, Sunny had never thought about it before. Hello, Grimo! Still weird. Trying to not show his confusion, Sunny furtively looked around and noticed a member of the library staff. It was a young man, no, wait, a young woman? A young person, with short black hair and intelligent brown eyes, who was currently reading a vintage-looking book. There was a badge on her chest, with the name Ren written on it. <gasps> is it... <laughs> is it Ren Dover from Author's POV that I'm also currently reading? <gasps> <laughs> Very PC, Sonny. At least Sonny thought that it was a name. Maybe it was some weird little title among the librarians. Who knew what kind of strange customs they had here? Yes. <laughs> I'm Renrank. <laughs> Approaching the young librarian, he stopped a couple of meters away and waited patiently to be noticed. However, Ren continued to read, fully engr engrossed in whatever story the book told, eyes full of deep emotion. Curious, Sunny looked at the title on the cover. Freefall. Sounds familiar. Must be a really great book. Maybe I should read it someday. Uh, hey, can I get some directions? Thank you, JP. It's very good. I really enjoy it. Ren lingered for a couple of seconds, then reluctantly put down the novel and looked at him with a neutral smile. Of course. How can I help you? He lingered for a bit, then said with uncertainty, how can I read about the dream realm and the current state of human expansion into its various regions? Ren blinked a couple of times, then asked politely, Uh, can you be more specific? Sunny sighed. 
I want to see a map and a list of all the citadels out there, as well as learn who knows what and why, I guess. The librarian smiled brightly. Ah, oh, you are a lover of history as well. Oh, no. <laughs> of course, of course. You have come to the right place. We have all the records you'll ever need here. Nickel. Sonny flinched. Nickel? What does nickel mean? What is happening? Help! <laughs> Freefall is the name of another of G3. <gasps> really? <gasps> Guilty 3. Oh. Nice. Nice insertion. <laughs> Suddenly, another young librarian appeared out of nowhere. This one was definitely a guy. What? Okay. Wearing a wrinkled white shirt and brown vest. He was tall and handsome, with slightly dishe disheveled red hair, scruffy bristle on his shin, and a friendly face. There was a badge in his vest, too, with the word Nickel written on it. The two were a strange pair. Nickel. Could you please escort this young man to the Dream Realm history section? The tall librarian glanced at Sonny and gave him a wide smile. Sure, please follow me. <laughs> they headed into the depths of the library, leaving Ren behind. A few moments later, Sonny heard the rustle of paper pages coming from behind. The small librarian was once again engrossed in the book. Yeah, I should definitely check that novel out. A citizen of the seventh rank should be well read, right? <laughs> now when I know when it's his own novel, it's so funny. <laughs> Nico led him through the library, asking a few questions to narrow down the search. Soon they arrived in front of a particular set of shelves, full of books having to do with the dream realm and the history of humanity's slow exploration of it. The young man helped Sunny select a few wished him luck, and disappeared as quietly and swiftly as he had appeared. Sonny looked at the spot where Nickel had been just a few moments ago, then slowly shook his head. A librarian. That guy could have been an assassin instead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, maybe he was. Come to think of it, working in a library could be a perfect cover for a clandestine... Clan... Clandestine... Operation... Ah, operators... <laughs> Maybe I should become a librarian too. Imagine, do the rest of the novel. Sunny the librarian. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. That's also another side story, please. <laughs> Making sure that no one was watching him, Sunny put his books on a nearby table and walked back to the shelves. There, he stared at a certain book that he had noticed a few minutes ago. Its title was simple The Immortal Flame. <gasps> Ooh. Sonny hesitated for a bit, and then took the book off the shelf. He was pretty sure that the Sovereigns were at least partially responsible for the fall of the Nef fall of Nef's clan. If so, there had to be some hints of their identity in the history of the Immortal Flame. This has to be a good place to start looking for some answers. Right? Right. <gasps> Get the three! This reader's cameo is dedic dedicated to- Ugh. Isayomi <laughs> and <laughs> Nikelio. The driving force behind the Shadow Slave Wiki. Aye! Thanks for supporting the novel, guys. Thanks you. Oh yes, Shadow Slave has a wiki now. Oh, you can check it out by visiting a corresponding channel in the Shadow Slave Discord or following this link. Nice. I'm not gonna do it obviously because there's a lot of spoilers. I really want to join the Discord though. I really, really want to, but it's like nope. I don't want to be spoiled. When I'm done. <laughs> that's my that's my goal. I will be able to join the Discord one day. <laughs> I need to support. Support. Okay, continuing. Chapter 367. Fog of Time. Sonny brought the book back to the table and sat down, looking at the plain cover with a complicated expression. Of course, he knew a few things about the Immortal Flame Clan. Everybody did, considering how prominent the achievements of its members were. Even though Sonny missed out on receiving a proper education, the legendary figures of Changing Star's father and grandfather had long ago found their way from the pages of history into the popular culture. Their names were pretty much synonymous with heroism and the indomitable nature of the human spirit, famously painted with a tinge of tragedy. 
Immortal Flame was the first awakened to become a master, and Broken Sword, his son-in-law, was the first master to become a saint. Of course, they had not done so alone. Each had a group of powerful companions to share the burden of challenging the spell. So, a more proper statement would have been that they were the leaders of the first cohorts to conquer the second and third nightmares. However, the names of their comrades was not, were not as well known. Sonny was sure that the kids learned about them in school, but a street rat like him only had a general impression of who they were. Mostly, he just remembered that, that some of them would go on to establish the great clans. But that was the thing about heroes. Sunny had once told Effie that one had to die to become a hero, and that was not a joke. A person could possess renown and respect for e achieving something incredible, but it was the act of making the ultimate sacrifice that elevated one to heroic status. That's why the Immortal Flame clan was reversed, revered much more than the other great clans, not only because the leaders of those courts came from it, but also because it had a tragic end. Or had it. If Nephis did manage to return to the real world, the fame of her clan would burn bright once again, perhaps even brighter than ever before. The survivors of the Dreamer army already treated her like a deity. With a sudden frown, Sunny awkwardly opened the book and started reading. Accustomed to reading off a screen, he struggled for a bit with the printed text. <laughs> what? Okay. But then quickly got used to it and engr engrossed himself in the illustrated illustrious history of the famed clan. The first part was dedicated to Immortal Flame himself, and although it was interesting, there was not a lot of information there that Sonny could use. He already knew that Neff's grandfather had been among the first wave of people infected by the Nightmare spell, and that he thought again fought against the Nightmare creatures during the initial mayhem that followed its appearance. Back then, millions of people were suddenly thrust into the first nightmares and died, resulting in millions of nightmare creatures entering the real world. Of course, almost all of them were only of the dormant rank, but even that turned out to be too much for the armies of the already reeling humanity to handle. Whole nations were destroyed. For a while, the planet was submerged into absolute chaos. It was only thanks to people like Immortal Flame, who had not earned his true name yet back then, of course, that the situation changed. There were those who had survived the first nightmare, then entered the dream realm and carved their path to gateways. After returning to the real world, they united and fought back against the tide of nightmare creatures, eventually establishing a new world order. The one that existed to this day. They were tough, tough people. Becoming an awakened was hard enough even today. With all the accumulated knowledge about the spell being freely accessible to everyone. Back when it first appeared, people like Immortal Flame didn't know anything. They didn't know what an aspect was, how many ranks and classes of the nightmare creatures were there, what they meant, what the memories and echoes were, what a gateway was. Most important of all, they didn't even know if saving humanity was even possible. And yet, somehow, they learned and fought back. Sunny couldn't imagine how dark and hellish that time must have been. Truly, they deserved his respect. But sadly, they didn't reserve his time. At least not now. He had much more pressing things on his plate. So Sunny just skimmed through the pages describing Immortal Flame's life, his eventual triumph over the second nightmare, and heroic death. The legendary master died defending the evacuating evacuating cities from the onslaught of terrible creatures that entered the real world through a Category 5 gate. That happened just a year or so before Sunny was born, and had cost humanity an entire continent. It was also the event that led to Neff's mother becoming hollow, although that tragedy was not described in the book in great detail. All that was said about it was that Smile of Heaven died during the disaster while protecting civilians. Sunny sighed and concentrated on reading about Broken Sword. Neff's father was not a legacy by birth. In fact, he came from a very humble background, and rose from absolute obscurity to the very pinnacle of prominence thanks only to his talent and battle genius. He was a pauper who had won the heart of a princess, and became the heir of the most venerated clan in human history. Hmm... 
I wonder if history will repeat itself. <laughs> the narrative of the book framed history in a way that suggested that Broken Sword had been heartbroken by the death of his wife, and that it was this loss that drove him to rise even higher and challenge the third nightmare. Miraculously, Broken Sword succeeded, becoming the first saint. There was no happy end to his, to his story, though. Just a few years later, he perished in the dream realm while exploring a region that would later be categorized as a death zone. The book ended with a long, wide-winded tribute to the two legendary heroes and an explanation of how important their contributions were to the survival and future prosperity of the human race. Sunny closed the book and shook his head. What a load of crap. He might not have been educated, but like most people in the outskirts, Sonny had the instinctive skill of recognizing propaganda and reading between the lines of official statements. And this was what the book was. An embellished, partially fictional version of events that the government liked to feed to people. The truth was hard to come by. There were several things about the supposed history of the Mortal Flame clan that didn't make a lot of sense to Sonny. The first one was the circumstances of Smile, and Heaven's, Smile of Heaven's tragic death. On paper, everything seemed fine, but Sunny knew that she was not, in fact, dead. Not in the traditional sense of the word, at least. She was hollow. But how could she become hollow? According to the book, at that point in time, Broken Sword had already become a master. The two of them were partners both in life and in battle, leading their cohort together. That would suggest that Smile of Heaven was a master too. But masters traveled to the dream realm physically as opposed to in spirit, like sleepers and awakened did. There would have been no soulless body left behind if she had died there. So, how was it possible? The timeline doesn't add up. The second questionable point was Broken Sword's own death. <clears throat> Saints were extremely powerful beings, and killing one was not an easy task. Even when wet... Even when... <laughs> even when met with the overwhelming foe, a saint should have been able to at least escape. Saints simply did not die unless they had a reason to stand their ground and fight to the last breath. The only creatures that could kill them instantly were too powerful and rare to stumble on one randomly, even when exploring an unknown region of the dream realm. Would Broken Sword have been so reckless and stubborn knowing that he had a daughter who needed his care and protection. The legendary swordsman didn't strike Sunny as someone who would allow himself to die easily, unless some other forces were involved. And finally, there were the other members of his cohort. Sunny whispered their names. Broken Sword, Smile of Heaven, Asterion, Key Song, Anvil of the Valor Clan. Asterion, Key Song, Anvil of Valor. Aster, Song, Veil, oh my god, <laughs> that's what the fish said. When we were at the tree, this just got interesting, it was already interesting though. <laughs> But, mm, Valet. Veil, to be. Chapter 368. Aster, Song, Veil. Sunny spent several hours reading the book about the history of the Mortal Clan book. Huh? Really? <laughs> Sunny spent several hours reading the book about the history of the Mortal Clan book. <laughs> He read about a book, okay. <laughs> and now, finally, he was starting to feel sleepy. Not to the point of needing to use the simulants provided to him by Master Jet, but enough to make it harder for him to concentrate. Rubbing his face, he mentally repeated the names of Broken Sword's companions, the brilliant warriors who had become the first saints of the human race. Asterion, Keysong, Anvil of the Valor Clan. Were they the Aster, Song, and Vale? While not exactly the same, the names of the members of the legendary cohort were too similar to the three words that Nevis had once told him to never say out loud, among a couple of among a couple of others, to be merely a coincidence. Let's see. 
what do I really know about all that stuff? Sunny knew that the three words held enough meaning to free, free Neff from the haze of the soul devourer's mind hex, at least partially. She had reacted to them very strongly, so much so that Sunny had actually been afraid for his life for a bit there. She had also asked him a strange question. He repeated it mentally, carefully to not say anything out loud. Which domain do you belong to? Sonny had no idea what the capital letter domain was back then, and he didn't know now. But he was, indeed, sure that there was a capital letter there. He also suspected that people who had been trying to kill Nephis for most of her life were connected to these mysterious domains. <coughs> Which meant the caster had been, too. From that, it wasn't hard to conclude that domains and sovereigns, who apparently willed the destruction of the Immortal Flame Clan, were tied together, or more likely, the same. And all of it had something to do with lineage memories and attributes they bestowed, like the fire attribute, that was described as the lineage of the sun god. He got lucky. Or his own blood weave, which was apparently both incomplete and forbidden. Sunny massaged his temples and sighed. For a long time, he had no clue about what Aster Song and Veil meant, but after meeting Seishin, an adopted daughter of the great, song, of the great clan Song, he began to suspect that they were the names of the three legacy clans responsible for the numerous attempts on Neff's life, and maybe even the deaths of her parents and the downfall of the Immortal Flame clan. Not only because of his inherent, inherent dislike of legacies, but also because of how peculiar Changing Star had described her relationship with the Handmaiden. Trusted. Not really. Never. Actually. Why would Nephis say that she would never, ever trust Seishin? Maybe it was because Seishin belonged to one of the clans responsible for the undoing of her family. That was a logical assumption. But now, Sunny saw that maybe he was wrong. Maybe Aster, Song, and Vale weren't the names of clans. Maybe these were the nicknames belonging to the three people. Asterion, Keysong, and Anvil of Clan Valor. They were Broken Sword's companions, and as such, Nephis had to have met them a lot before her father died. Neither Broken Sword himself nor his daughter would have been addressing them by their full names either. What would she call them? Uncle Aster? Auntie Song? Sunny looked down, a dark expression appearing on his face. If these were really the people that had later sent numerous assassins to hunt down the little girl who trusted them, then the hatred Nevis had for them would be easy to explain. It would also be easy to explain how a saint of Broken Sword's talent and might had died. Maybe, maybe he had been stabbed in the back by the people he trusted the most. Even though there was no proof, it all made too much sense. Sunny felt that he was on the right track. But how were Asterion, Keysong, and Anvil of the Clan Valor connected to mysterious sovereigns? Did they serve them, or...? His eyes widened. A terrible suspicion entered his mind. Not... not a suspicion. A certainty. It's them. They are the sovereigns! The revelation hit him like a hurricane squall. Too vast to comprehend all at once. And the key to it was a simple sentence that Nephis had once told him while overwhelmed by intense emotions. How did he miss it? Back when they had their falling out in a deserted alley of the outer settlement, Neff said, You think Gunlaw can stop me? You think a fallen terror can stop me? Those three ghouls can stop me? No, Sunny, nothing will stop me. Anyone who dares will die. I'll kill them all. She had listed her enemies. She listed them in the order of magnitude. First Gunlog, then the Crimson Terror, and then the Sovereigns. Three ghouls. Aster, Song, and Vale. Just as he was trying to cope with, it, with that idea, another frightening realization appeared in Sunny's mind. He shuddered. Recalling another thing that Nevis had said, he then mumbled quietly, No, I won't be the first one to conquer the fourth nightmare. I'll be the first one to conquer ever, every nightmare. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Back then, he had understood her as wishing to be the first one to beat the fourth nightmare, as well as all the rest. But her words could have been interpreted in a different way. Among the awakened, there, were, there was a general agreement that the names of the ranks were not coincidental. 
Many people thought that the words used by the spell described the as ascent toward godhood, or the descent into profanity, as far as nightmare creatures were concerned. In many ways, these, three, these two paths were reflections of each other. A person of a third rank was described as ascended, as ascended, since they were rising above their human nature. A creature of the same rank was called fallen. This step had to do with ascension, or, or, or the opposite of it. A person of the fourth rank was described as transcendent, since they had transcended the mundane and assumed some qualities of the divine. A creature of the same rank was called corrupted. This step had to do with transformation. It was no coincidence that the aspect ability the saints received was called the transformation ability, after all. Too much information for my brain, we're the monsters. <laughs> I like this though, but it's a lot. The next step also had a special meaning to it. It represented authority and reign. Be it supreme or great, beings of that level were meant to consol consolidate their power and exert it upon the world. The fifth step of the class hierarchy was much the same, allowing nightmare creatures to create and control armies of lesser minions. Such creatures were called tyrants. What would a human who had searched, who had reached the supreme rank be called then? Sunny trembled. A sovereign. Nephis had not meant that she would not only be the first human to conquer the fourth nightmare, but also all the rest. She had meant that she would be the first to conquer the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. Because the fourth nightmare had already been conquered. Gods. Key of the great clan Song, Anvil of the great clan Valor, and a person called Asterion had conquered it. And Broken Sword of the Immortal Flame. Broken Sword had been mysteriously killed in the process. Aster, Song, and Vale had returned from the fourth nightmare, breathed in new authority, while Broken Sword perished. What was their domain? Possibly the expression of the fifth aspect ability they had received. A special one, just like the special transformation ability the saints possessed. And, for some reason, they had chosen to keep their accomplishment a secret. Instead exerting... Instead exerting their influence on humanity from the shadows. Wasn't it strange that their names seemed to practically disappear from the pages of history after Broken Sword died? They too were the first to become saints after all. Not if they had chosen to keep them hidden. Wasn't it strange that Caster of Han Lee clan seemed so loyal to the mysterious sovereigns who had ordered him to kill the last daughter of the mortal flame clan? Not if they were the real power behind the great legacy clans to which his own lesser clan was beholden. Wasn't it hard to believe that there were words that could kill just by becoming known to a person? Not if those words were the names of the three supreme rulers that preferred to remain nameless. Sonny groaned slightly, then covered his face with his hands. Crap, crap, crap! Why did I have to go and get myself involved in all this crap? <laughs> he had a feeling that his life had just become much more complicated fated fated that's what it is craziness last chapter let's go chapter 369 <laughs> <laughs> stupid 369 hidden forces Sonny spent some time staring at the pile of books in front of him with a dark expression. After a while, he sighed heavily. So, there were hidden forces out there that exerted influence over the entire human race. The authority was as invisible as it was frightening. And now he knew their names. The sovereigns were at least as powerful as the government, or maybe even more so. The exact relationship between these two hegemonic powers one official, the other secretive, was not clear, but for now, knowing the full extent of the authority resting in the hands of the sovereigns was not that important. However, it was important to know that the world was not at all as he had imagined. It was much more dangerous. Why? Because if there was one thing that all wielders of authority shared, it was the anon animosity toward other encroaching on their power. That was just human nature. Among the strong, only one entity could be the strongest. 
and so that entity was always apprehensive of others growing stronger. Bosses of criminal gangs in the outskirts were always paranoid of their lieutenants usurping them, and tended to violently get rid of those who were too successful. In the dark city, Gunlog reigned with an iron fist, destroying anyone who dared to be strong without submitting to his rule. And sovereigns would be much the same. Sansani was already powerful beyond reason, for a person of his age at least, and had an even more frightening potential. The sovereigns would never allow him to exist outside their control. Luckily, they did not know the true extent of his strength yet. But since his main goal was to become stronger, as strong as he possibly could, as fast as he possibly could, to not fall behind Nephis, that was going to be a problem. Suddenly, some things about the Awakened Society became more clear. A long time ago, Sunny had learned that Master Jet had no chance of ever becoming a saint. Apparently, one had to be, have a team of outstanding companions and a lot of support to attempt conquering the Third Nightmare, and she lacked both due to her problematic personality. Cassie, come back! <laughs> Would sovereigns allow someone outside their grasp be to become a saint? Most resources and knowledge about the Dream Realm belonged to the Legacy Clans, especially when it came to anything having to do with higher ranks, and the clans were controlled by the sovereigns, which basically meant that they could prevent anyone from becoming a saint simply by refusing their support. How many talented masters like Jet were being suppressed from growing more powerful because they didn't serve one of the Supremes? There were a couple of saints serving the government at least. Who were they really loyal to? I hate it. I hate it so much. Of course, Sunny knew that all of this was just his conjecture. And yet, one thing was certain. The choice presented to him by Master Jet was not as straightforward as he had thought. In truth, he wasn't deciding whether the Great Clans, the Lesser Clans, the Government, and Independence. He was deciding between entering into the service to the Sovereigns or refusing it. And that choice was strained even further by his connection to Changing Star. Damnation! With a sigh, Sonny stared at the bookshelves surrounding him, and then stood up. He had to get a few more books to read. Many hours later, he tiredly put the last one away and rubbed his face. Now that he had absorbed a lot of knowledge about the current geography and situation of the Dream Realm, a seed of a plan began to form in his mind. However, he still needed more information. He wouldn't be able to find it here, however. <laughs> however, he would, however. For that, he would have to visit an old acquaintance. Now, please, Julius, for God's sake! <laughs> One thing he did find, nevertheless, was a bit more information about the Sovereigns. Asterion, Keysong, and Anvil of Valor. The last one was possibly the most renowned. An heir of the Great Clan, he was mentioned many times in the text describing the human expansion into the northern territories of the Dream Realm, as well as the history of Bastion, one of the three central human citadels in the Dream Realm. In fact, he had apparently been responsible for slaying the Titan whose, remain whose remains were then used to create the share Sunny was currently sitting on. Strong. Later, though, the traces of Saint Anvil disappeared. There was no mention of his death, but the reins of Clan Valor were now in the hands of his cousin, cousins, at least officially. Key Song was only slightly less famous. Unlike Anvil of Vale, she had come from one of the lesser legacy clans, and it was by her hand that it was elevated to the status of a great one. The stronghold of Clan Song, Ravenheart, has was the second major human settlement in the Dream Realm. Its sphere of influence was separated from the other two territories, territories by especially dreadful regions. The border with the Valor Clan was especially deadly, but also rather thin. From what Sunny was able to learn, Ki Song was still the ruler of her clan, although she rarely appeared in public. She was known as a benevolent and charitable person, but that was pretty much all the information he could find. It seemed that it was her adoptive daughters who mostly acted on her behalf. Seishin was one of them, although she was trapped on Forgotten Shore for too long to be mentioned anywhere. And lastly, there was a man named Asterion. He was the most mysterious of the three. No one seemed to know where he came from and where he went after the Broken Swords cohort was disbanded. 
In fact, there was barely any mention of him at all. Asterion was not connected to the third great legacy clan, at least from the looks of it, or any lesser clan for that matter. Sunny couldn't even find out when and where he had been born, let alone if he was still alive. Even in the text describing the deeds of Broken Sword and his companions, the name Asterion was only mentioned in passing, as though he had never made any important contributions. Sunny shook his head and scowled. Let me guess, he's the most terrifying of the three. Like you, Sunny. <laughs> that was an easy conclusion to make, because it took one to know one. Easy. <laughs> Sunny himself was barely mentioned and tended to hide his contributions. Ugh, my head hurts. The worst part was that this was only half of all the research he had to do. He had learned enough about the human position in the dream realm and the sovereigns. Now he had to learn as much as he could about the gods, the demons, and the unknown. It was time to pay Teacher Julius a visit. Yes! Of course, Sonny couldn't visit his old instructor with empty hands. Pushing the books aside, he activated the terminal embedded into the table, lingered for a few moments, and then typed. All of the Forgotten Shore is separated into three parts, one of which... Oh, yes. Writing time! Eh, yeah. I don't know if you can hear. Doggo is now hungry because I almost... I made it just in time. Just in time. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I will be right there with you. Yeah. Very soon. I will close stream first. End stream. Dog. <laughs> Dog hungry. <laughs> that was today's 10 chapters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 10 chapters over. Very good 10 chapters. I love being back into the real world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. But what's to come? Ah! And to be Julius again. Eee! Probably next chapter then even. That would be amazing. Oh, Why was with dog cries? <sighs> Happy to stream again. It's very nice. And Shadow Slave is always amazing. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. In any type of way you did. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. For more appreciation, please <laughs> go follow me on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram. Become a patron. Check out the Discord. Do it. I will be back tomorrow, hopefully, if nothing goes wrong. Otherwise, I'll be here on Thursday, 100%. Because, yes, I will, I promise. <laughs> I can't promise, but I will do my best. I can promise that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching again. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Hey, doll. Bye-bye.